as I've told you before, because I love it so much, they also created the Great Seal of the United States. And that Great Seal of the United States has on it Nobus Order Seclorum, a new order for the centuries, for the ages, forever. So confident were that our founders and their idea about one generational responsibility one to the next that they were confident that our country, that what they were putting forth would exist for the ages. For the ages. That was the challenge they gave us. That is the responsibility that we have. Human beings in a world war, it is, I think, permissible for me to search far back in the history of civilization in order to visualize important trends. On the great seal of the United States, which for a century and a half has reposed in the loving care of a long line of secretaries of state of the United States, there appear these words, Novus Ordo Seclorum, which means a new order of the ages. In almost every century since the day that recorded history began, people have thought, quite naturally, that they were creating or establishing some kind of a new order of the ages. But in the scheme of civilization from which ours descends, I suppose that we can recognize that in approximately 2,500 years, there have been only a very few new orders in the development of human living under a thing called government. Without question, the philosophy of orderly government in which the governed had some form of voice in a civilized society, goes back to the days of ancient Greece. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, August 8th, 2011, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. And ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel, so check it out. Links will be posted. I have a lot of news to get to in this uh, first uh, video so just uh, I'm going to go through this real quick for any of those uh, naysayers or skeptics or whatever you want to call it I mean this is exactly from the Philadelphia uh, feds website so you can go to Philadelphia uh, fed.org and you can check this out Franklin Roosevelt's role now that we know what the great seal stands for we might ask why it appears on our paper money who made the decision as you can see from the image to the right uh, the first small size dollar issued in America did not feature the great seal or much of the symbolism at all and it says that it used to be called funny backs and it all changed in 34 when vice president wallace uh, was waiting to go into a meeting picked a publication of the great seal and focused on the latin phrase novus ordo seclorum and uh, he was uh, talking to roosevelt and saying that uh, the message should be understood as the new deal of the ages which um, you know, you can say what you want about it but either way as freemasons now this is not a this is not a conspiracy site Again, Philadelphia Fed at Org. As Freemasons, both Roosevelt and Wallace saw the symbol above the pyramid as representing the all-seeing eye, the Masonic symbol of the great architect of the universe. President Roosevelt liked Wallace's idea very much, so much, in fact, that he decided to replace the design on the reserve of our $1 bills with something more symbolic and patri ooh, patriotic, the great seal of the United States. So there you go. There's a little, little brief uh, uh, stuff on it, and you can actually go in there, and they... Uh, they talk about it, and they say that um, that uh, how the great seal of the U.S. Uh, says, and hidden within it are messages of our founding fathers who wanted uh, to send the future generations of Americans. Yeah, uh, and it's more like uh, Freemasons, right? And Illuminists and uh, travelers, fellow travelers. And, uh, of course, you got Jefferson and Franklin, pharaohs and turkeys, so more Egyptian, uh, pharaonic language, and that's what it's all based of, based off of. Global markets plunge amid debt woes, so 
European markets all closed down following heavy U.S. losses at Walls as Wall Street reacted to Washington's loss of the top AAA credit rating. So I can go in there and check that out. I think it was 600 points the, uh, the Dow dropped today. It says Chinese stocks closed down 3.9 or 79% on Monday. So it said here we finished at 11,312 points. Arab stocks also plunge over U.S. credit crisis, and there's always going to be crisis, and now this is just a new crisis, and it's all fabricated. Bank stocks plunge most since 2009. Biggest one, Bank of America. AIG sues Bank of America for $10 billion over massive mortgage fraud, and uh, this was just a couple days ago, and then the, the day Bank of America stock fell 20%, and... Um, it uh, basically what it says because it's after the insurance giant AIG sued the bank for 10 billion for overvaluing mortgage-backed securities. So that was the last scam. That was the last crisis, uh, the last big fraud. And here comes more fraud, right? Because now you have a super Congress, uh, uh, less representation in in, in your uh, republic now, and it was slipped into a financial uh, debt-raising ceiling uh, bill. So I hope you like that. Dollar to be discarded by world, says China uh, rating agency. And then we move on to dollar, the U uh, Australian dollar, sorry. Dollar falls to four-month low. Then the franc yen gain versus peers uh, on downgrade Europe crisis dollar advances. Then the yuan climbs most uh, in a week on U.S. rating downgrade. And even the old Mexico peso weakens to lowest since December on U.S. rating downgrade. Okay, Treasuries surge after S&P downgrade fuels safety bid. Stocks index sink. S&P begins to cut AAA rated muni bonds after downgrading U.S. debt rating. Cut the ratings on about $366 million of federal lease back bonds as it began to announce reports on municipal securities affected by the company's uh, August 5th downgrade of the United States. Then moving on to commodities here, uh, they were uh, basically... Uh, plunging and it says here Brent crude now at $103 uh, a barrel and uh, it was down $5.60 gas oil futures were down $12 that's right gas is going down then heating oil futures were up almost $2 natural gas uh, about steady even that uh, all of these were down as far as agriculture goes uh, cocoa was down 30 uh, corn 17 wheat about 30 soybean uh, 25 and then moving down to precious metals we had copper it was down two dollars and 85 cents trading at 393 dollars and 30 cents gold is the big story 1724 dollars now and uh, who knows how much it's going to go up now it says it's up uh, ten dollars almost eleven dollars uh, and it says here silver futures uh, just below forty dollars and it was down eleven cents poor silver it's so undervalued uh, it says here oil falls to eight month low in new york as investors buy treasuries and gold then iran oil lpg exports to china are going to increase it says here oh yeah and uh, just a quick side note iran also uh, discovered uh, um uh, a gas field, natural gas field. Uh, China's July inflation to exceed 6% says analysis in Toyota now number three in global vehicle sales. So said uh, sold 3.7 million vehicles worldwide this year, down 11% compared to a year earlier as sales crashed 60% on production disruption caused by the globalist harp induced man made earthquake that, that uh, basically declared financial war on a somewhat sovereign nation. Uh, talking about Japan there, Japan rice futures surge 40% trigger circuit breaker on concerns Fukushima radiation will destroy crops. And an excerpt from Bloomberg, there's a chart says people are very concerned that rice supplies may be smaller on fear of radiation contamination. Mr. Chino, chairman of the exchange's rice fu uh, futures trading committee told reporters in Tokyo. Then FedEx to raise U.S. Canada freight rates to almost 7%. And then the 830,000 homeowners in negative equity trap. And it says more than 800,000 families are crippled by a mortgage larger than the value of their home, an alarming report warned yesterday. Then we have pension warning amid market turmoil. People nearing retirement were uh, facing increased uncertainty today amid the stock market turmoil that has wiped trillions off global uh, share prices. It says 8 million Britons have their pension fund invested in money purchases or defined contribution schemes where the size of an annual pension is usually linked to how stock, stock markets uh, perform. Then S&P downgrades Fannie and Freddie. 
and they went from AAA to AA. Then S&P downgrades U.S. credit rating for the first time. And um, moving on here, Moody's backs USA's AAA uh, rating, and S&P cuts Fannie and others. So it says S&P's began uh, issuing a number of rating downgrade Monday as it explores the far-reaching effects of the downgrade of the U.S. credit rating issued. Rival ratings agency Moody's reaffirmed the country's AAA status. Hmm. Then, uh, oh yeah, Moody's, don't forget, they got rated just the last report three days ago. Their office is... Uh, for fraud or something. It says here, Moody's uh, says U.S. needs to find more uh, deficit cuts. And uh, moving on here, U.S. debt downgrade could mean rate hikes for all. So now this is what pisses me off, okay, is because they were just, uh, Obama was out there talking about if we don't pass this deal, if we don't pass this deal, then uh, interest rates are going to go up. Okay, so they, they pass a deal, they slipped in the super congress or the super committee that can uh, override, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever uh, basically other congressmen want to do. And it creates a committee of, what, 12 uh, plus 1, the, their team with the president. But anyways, uh, so after all that scaremongering, everything's going to be okay now. Um, now we have this. Now we're talking about rate hikes, and Obama's talking about how we're not going to uh, increase the rates. Well, now we have a super congress, and just go ahead and do that. You see how it works? So they got what they wanted. <laughs> And then they're going to increase the rates by force with the super congress that was created in the first bill. So complete bullshit. Jim Rogers don't see how U.S. can ever pay off debts. And that's uh, right, right? So it's here uh, pressure. I think it's 100% uh, of GDP. That's, uh, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. The amount of debt U.S. holds to GDP, and it says pressure grows. And I may be uh, uh, wrong in that. If I am, just correct me in the comment board. Um, as far as financial news, I'm not an expert. Uh, I like to go more into uh, international, like the war on terror and, and Big Brother and all that, and eugenics. Um, but I feel that uh, this rigged fascist economy, whatever you want to call it, corporatist economy, needs to be covered. So I cover it. Pressure grows for Fed to act as stocks plunge. And it says it's still a remote possibility, but one that becomes increasingly more plausible with every tick lowering in the plunging global stock markets. So that's right. Uh, most anal analysis still expect the Federal Reserve not to make any major changes. And it says some are beginning to wonder whether the market disruptions of recent sessions warrant some kind of central bank intervention. So you know what that means, right? More inflation, more buying of uh, treasuries and that. Global policymakers discuss debt crisis market turmoil. So now the experts are going to get together, the ones that help create this, and they're going to get together and they're going to determine your future. Uh, this this new order of the ages, right? ECB, uh, European Central Bank, to hold Sunday conference call on crisis source. Now another crisis. We're going to get together. Uh, financial crisis G7 meets up to hold emergency conference. Then the G20 moves to call markets after local shares. So you see all this crap. U.S. Treasury Secretary will not resign. And... Uh, why? Well, because he didn't complete the mission. He was supposed to jump ship after uh, they did everything uh, uh, with this uh, debt ceiling raise and all that. But uh, no, it's not over. Geithner, S&P showed terrible judgment. So that's, that's what Geithner's saying. And Obama, U.S. will always be AAA rated despite downgrade. So they're both out of touch with reality, right? ECB buys Italy, Spain bonds, easing fares. So they went ahead and did that. Then, uh, you know, create more inflation over there. People lose their uh, standard of living and their purchasing power. And uh, downgrade raises stakes for deficit super panels. So shaken by the historic debt downgrade, markets look for signs that a congressional deficit reduction super committee, super, super congress, would produce a fiscal policy breakthrough, but they were likely to be disappointed. No chance of default, says Greenspan. U.S. can just print money. Okay, yeah, all right. Good policy. Greece bans short selling as stocks tank. Then U.S. will roll out QE3 after S&P rating cut, Doki says, and then is carried by a cryptogon and business inside of U.S. government has to come to terms with the painful fact that the good old days are over when it comes to uh, just borrowing its way out of messes of its own making are finally gone, and Xinhua wrote. Then $1 billion bet in July of U.S. downgrade brings questions of insider information. Talking about globalist uh, Soros that Online retail spending rises 14%. Lawmakers hope Arizona can cash in on California internet tax. And Australian businessman supports online sales. Why aren't more states pursuing an online tax? Then we have this. Illinois moves to tax online purchases. So what happens? Amazon closes Illinois affiliates after Quinn signs online tax bill. 
killing business. So let's go ahead and tax online. One of the few things where we're actually having some uh, purchases and commerce going on. Let's kill that shit right now. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.